What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here. Now, you may have seen my previous unboxing of the Hoover Elite 2, and from the same person, known as the lovely Nathan, whose channel will be linked in the description below, this particular machine is pretty special. It's a, well, a machine I've been wanting for quite a while, and it's actually one that Nathan bought brand new, believe it or not. And I don't know off the top of my head if, it's, if it was one that he used at any point, but it is a very old machine that is in the original box still. And whether it's open box or like new or slightly used doesn't bother me any. But I got it for not an amazing price, but Nathan kind of overpaid for it. He admitted for that. And so he just kind of wanted to get some of his money back on it, which I totally understand. So I paid $120 for this. And because I know, technically speaking, this and the Elite were both... 120 one of them was 125. I forget which one doesn't really matter, but they were both were practically $120 plus shipping which including shipping is 150 so I spent $300 in total for both machines and Some people may say that's way too much, but the elite was in beautiful condition So as long as this is in equivalent condition and considering it should be in the box It should be then I'll be happy with this as well since I did basically pay MSRP for this as these, this machine brand new would have been about one, 109 or something like that, maybe 119 depending on the retail location. Now, from what I understand, this isn't the original box, but it was custom wrapped in cardboard to protect the outer box, or to protect the original box, I should say. So this, this tape in particular is not willing to cooperate. So... So, from what I've been told, it's, uh, it's quite the interesting packaging. It appears I've opened it upside down, so... Well, that's odd, because the packaging is right side up, but no big deal. So, I'm going to see... I'm going to try cutting the side. I'm going to try not to cut the main box, even though I'm not the biggest, you know, box collector when it comes to vacuums. Since this is quite old, I do want to save this box, if at all possible. So I'm going to try to cut this folded piece of the box, so I can kind of fold this a bit more out of the way, and make it a bit easier to pull this machine out. So I'm going to try holding the, the bottom of the box with my feet, and pulling this top, which is apparently squeezing the sides and not making it want to come out. Maybe I should try holding it this way. Yes, yeah, it's not. So it looks like what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to flip this over and try a different way to slide this out. Okay, so we started to slide this. Looks like we'll have the big reveal. Alrighty, here we go. So as we can see right here, I'm gonna flip this box back over so that way we don't show any address addressable information. So here it is. It is a resealed but open box Bissell Velocity bagged upright. So very interesting. I haven't seen one of these boxes in years. So this definitely takes me back. So we can see Bissell Velocity bagged upright vacuum. Hi Rika. No mess bag removal. See the dirt and debris. Has the dirt path window. Epimedia filter. There's a cat snuggling my legs as I film this video. Hi, Rika. And see bag inside. This is basically just a clean view helix with a bag stuffed in the center piece. <coughs> Excuse me. With a bag stuffed in the centerpiece where the dirt cup and the filter cup would be. Just kinda it's I, I guarantee like this this whole setup, I guarantee is just this piece and this piece swapped in for the other pieces for the bagless model. Very cheap way of shoehorning a bag design into a bagless unit. But that's why it's so interesting. So this is model 6221. And I don't I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's asking a lot that we kind of look at the box together and just see what this is all about. 
velocity bagged upright vacuum. I never actually, this was, this isn't one of those machines that I specifically said I wanted to find NOS, but I've wanted to find a Bissell of this era NOS, and this is also a machine I wanted to find, so kind of kill two birds with one stone. Ideally, I would find a Bissell Power Glide in the box, along with the Phantom Fury, but that's probably not going to happen. We can see no mess bag removal, has Febreze bags. This uses its own special bag that's different from many of the other Bissell Style 7 bag machines. It uses its own custom bag, which are a bit hard to find nowadays, but should be at least somewhat able to be found. So, no mess bag removal, toss bag when full, no mess, Febreze vacuum bags capture allergens and neutralize household malodors while you vacuum. See the dirt and debris. The unique dirt path window lets you see the dirt you pick up before it enters the Febreze bag. Hello Rika, please do not loaf on my lap, I am working. Anyways, have a media filter, this f f filter captures 99.9% .9 of pollens and ragweed from the air passing through it. Rika. Do not get comfy. I'm not laying. I'm not sitting down on the floor for any extended period of time. I don't want you to get too comfortable because I'm in the middle of working. Oh, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So we can see looks very similar to a clean view helix. Has a completely blacked out front window, which I greatly prefer, as it means you don't have to worry as much about the brush roll matching. Uh, this one-year limited warranty, which I guarantee is no longer valid, includes a turbo brush tool, dual edge cleaning, no mess bag removal, a crevice and combination tool, 27-foot power cord, HEPA media filter, and it's lightweight, under 17 pounds. Rika, can you stop shoving your butt in my face? I'm trying to do a video. Ma'am. Ma'am, can you not? I'm trying to do a video. You are so expressive with that tail. You know, you you make yourself a part of every video I do nowadays. You would think you'd get sick of being in the spotlight at some point. But I don't think you do, do you? Do you care about that? Stop nuzzling my camera. Okay. And it looks like we've got roughly the same thing on this side similar thing on this side clean is our family tradition since 1876 Rika, i'm gonna have to move you okay got the turbo brush tool great for Rika. Rika. no i ma'am i whatever so we got the turbo brush tool we've got the bag tank convenient bag container allows for easy emptying five height settings Dual edge cleaning, which on these older ones, the dual edge cleaning is not that great. Vacuum comes with a Febreze bag to eliminate odors and leave your home smelling fresh as you vacuum. Ma'am, you keep hitting me in the face with your tail. Ma'am, can you stop it? Look at that tail. Look at that thing. No. <laughs> Hi. Okay, can I can't even lean forward because you're in the way. All right, where was I looking at? Okay, the vacuum comes with a breeze bag. I think I read that part already. Sustainable design, recycled materials. Please recycle. Well, I don't have recycling. This one is made in Korea. Model sixty two twenty one. Proud sponsor of what is that? Is that the Ronald McDonald House? I don't know. Bissell had anything to do with that. Frequently asked questions. Yep. Ma'am. Ma'am. I'm trying to show them the box. No. You are in rare form. You are in rare form tonight. <laughs> I love you, Rika, but. Ah! Ow! Oh! Spicy. Anyways. She's never bit me before. Wow, that's new. Anyways, yeah, she clearly was upset about that. She's like, how dare you? 
Anyways, get a little barcode right there. I wonder what happens if I try to like scan this with like the Walmart app or something. I'll have to try that later, just out of curiosity. Um, but yeah. So I think that's it as far as the box goes. So I think it's time we finally stop wasting time and open this thing already. All right, we've got my broken tripod very carefully balanced right here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the tape for what is presumably the second time. Actually, it's definitely the second time because I know that Nathan opened this once before at least. So I did see, obviously the tape is a lot weaker than what they used from the factory. So it says, thank you for selecting Abyssal product. Earn Bissell Rewards, Bissell Rewards Points, Faster Service, Registration. It says, if you should happen to need assistance during some of your operation, call this number. Please do not return this product to the store. Well, I don't think that's even an option for me, so no worries there. Got a hose. Okay, I can tell he used this at least once because there's a little bit of dust in the hose. It's not exactly NOS anymore, but it's close to it. It still smells new though. So there's our stretch hose, basically identical to a clean view helix. Again, this whole machine screams this whole clean view helix. Got an extension wand, crevice tool. Yeah, okay, pretty typical. Looks like we've got the original packaging mixed with some extra bubble wrap, which I appreciate. We've got, of course there's no carrying handle on the machine right now, so trying to pull this out is a little tricky. I'll grab the handle and pull that out. Still nice and shiny. Typical Bissell handle. I mean, there's <laughs> you can only unbox so many Bissells before the experience is very similar but you know everyone knows that Bissell you know is has always been a, a brand that I liked at least when it comes to their vacuums I've had such bad luck with their carpet cleaners that I it's really hard for me to recommend them so I guess I just grab it by the actual intake so I don't know how else to grab this and lock that into the upright position combination tool is on the back already of course it's a Bissell so you assemble it the same way you assemble any other Bissell and there is what appears to be some bags in here as well as the turbo brush so we've got some Febreze model 3267 We've got a turbo brush. I believe this is the bag it came with. So we've got some extra bags thrown in here. This bag can be opened. So this is model 3267, which I don't believe was what the model number of this said, but we'll look at that in a second. So it appears this is the correct bag for this, but I'll double check that. Got our owner's manual, very nice. And this is copyright 2012, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Got our original Febreze bag, 3267. Very, very, very tiny. This is like something you'd see on like a Eureka Mighty Might or like an Auric Buster B. That's pretty fascinating. Then, of course, we've got the lovely turquoise blue turbo brush. So, these are fantastic. These work way better than newer ones, so no complaints as far as this goes. All right, so we're going to scooch this forward and we're going to assemble this. So, pretty self explanatory. We're going to take this. 
and we're gonna back out this screw. When, when this was actually new, this would have came in a little tiny bag that would have been affixed to the handle with some sort of tape. So, of course, that's not a thing anymore. Rika, are you... She always does this. She'll just sit on the back of my legs. Rika. I... Okay. This cat. <laughs> Anyways, now we're going to take the handle pretty basic got some dust on it from the packaging it's pretty typical and just like every missile of this era of this design we're gonna line it up with the tabs and we're just gonna slide it forward until it pushes all the way on until it's flush which it's flush now so now we're gonna put this screw right back in here and we're gonna flip this over to the Titan option and tighten this screw without stripping it. Uh, not quite. I think it's just a little long for this screwdriver in particular. I don't know if I can get the last bit of it, maybe. Can't really. Oh, I don't even think it's lined up. Okay, so I guess the last little bit, I can't quite get the screwdriver, but it'll be close enough. And there's that. So we've got our cord, which we'll go ahead and just untangle. Or not untangle, but un undo with these little twist ties. I don't believe this would have came with a pink twist tie out of the box. That may be a Nathan edition, but I could be wrong. Oh, it's, it's actually twisted up with it, so I need, that's going to be a pain to get undone. Got to push this out of this. It's like actually like tied together. There we go, and now we can twist this out. Oh, it helped if I twist it the correct way. This is the only problem with twist ties, that there's, you, you never, they're like USB-A ports, you never, you never try the right direction first. You always end up trying it, trying it the correct way, but not realizing it. Then you try the other way, and then realize the first time was correct, so you try it three times before you actually get it. Same story with twist, with twist ties. So we've got the cord right here. This is a, I don't know if this is 25 or 30 feet off the top of my head. For this model, I'm going to assume it's probably 25. Well, it could be 30, maybe 27. I don't know. Because so I know the normal Clean V Helix would have been 25, and then some of the premier, premier models were up to 30 of this body design. And, yeah, this handle's not all the way on, but it's, it's close enough for now. Rika, you keep, I keep moving around and I keep bumping you. Ma'am, so if you weren't constantly in the camera, or if you weren't constantly in my way, I wouldn't be bumping you all the time. You realize that, right? I love you, but I'm doing a video right now. So, can you wait until after the video? Rika. Okay, anyways. Alright, so. Oh, did you just hear my knees pop? So now we're going to install the hose, which is pretty typical. Just line this up in these little pegs and twist it clockwise a quarter turn until it locks into place. Then we can take the hose, push it right down into the hose cuff or the hose slot and click the hose right in the top bracket, which so many people don't do. So many people with Bissels, they just leave the hose down like that and it's like, oh, come on, why would you want to do that. I understand you're saving maybe a second in putting it up, but like it's literally more in the way than if you just put it up there. That's why it's there. Anyway, so we've got the combination tool already in its proper spot. So we just need to take the extension wand with the crevice tool and put it right back there. That's just like every previous clean view. And finally, we'll take 
the turbo brush, which is a little, no, actually, that feels fine. We're gonna take these little pegs right here and line it up at the base of this handle and push it in until it clicks and it's flush with this black piece. When we want to remove the turbo tool, there is a nice little gap right here that wasn't there on the earliest Cleanview Power Tracks, but on this model, you can just simply grab it and pull it out, but it is, it is kind of in there and it is very stiff when you first get it. So there is a reason why they eventually ditched this in favor of just a clip on the handle. And unfortunately, many of these turbo brushes have manufacturing defects where the brush roller has a lot of play. This one is one of those. So unfortunately, this brush roller is gonna rattle a lot when we use this turbo brush, but it will still work perfectly fine. So, our Bissell Velocity Bagged is officially fully assembled. Now, just like when I unbox a brand new machine, I won't be running the machine in this video. This will just be the unboxing assembly tutorial, although, again, this machine is out of production, so it wasn't really much of a tutorial, and just a basic overview of the machine, showing how to use it, etc. Again, it's not going to be as tutorial focused as it would be for a machine that's currently in production because, of course, nobody else has one of these brand new in the box. So that is pretty much that. There really uh, isn't much else to say. So, but we will still do a basic overview on this machine, mainly focusing on the difference between this and the Cleanview Helix. Now, I don't need to show the Cleanview Helix, even though I do have a Rewind Smart Clean. Everyone knows how that works. But this one is a bit more interesting and a bit different. So we still have the lock and seal lever. We push this to the left and the entire container moves down so that way the customer can remove it from the machine. Just like the bagless version, nothing has changed. We've still got the same little tabs to pull this bin out. But the difference is that, well, first we'll go off the similarities. So this particular um, intake right here, this cyclone, is actually pretty much very similar to what we find on the clean views. In fact, this piece right here is not different from what I understood. It's only this piece that's different, which technically means because all of these brackets appear to be the same, but I will verify that later and see if we can swap components between the two machines because I'd be very interested to know. And it'd be really cool to figure out if it's possible to convert a CleanView Helix to a velocity with just these pieces. Although to my knowledge, these pieces are not made anymore. So I don't believe that'd be feasible, but I don't know, maybe if you had a broken one of these, but I'll check that at a later date. But this simply lines back up and twists back into place. There we go. So now that is back into place. And we've got our quote unquote dust cup right here. I mean, it kind of is, but it's just a opaque black container with a lid that pulls up and has, well, a bag inside of it. And the bag does have some dust that I just poured out. So we've got, okay, so we've got a card in here. I don't know if this is supposed to be in here or not. So we actually have a little filter right here at the bottom of this, which is interesting. We have the same pre-motor filter as the CleanView Helix and the PowerForce bagless machines. So we've got the same levels of pre-motor filter filtration. In fact, we technically have one extra filter than what we would have in normal Bissell bagged up rights like the PowerGlide Platinum. So we've actually got an additional filter, but this bag is, as you can see, very small. It has the Febreze tag, which of course has been torn already and this just simply attaches to this mechanism. So in the similar vein to where there would be a bag collar, this just attaches to it. And there's, there's two little pegs that we basically have to pull out of the way. There's some hair on that. So it's kind of similar to uh, some Eureka uprights where there's like two tabs so there are these two tabs right here that the cardboard collar clicks into, and that's what essentially holds the bag vertically onto this mount. So the cardboard just simply clips right in, just like that, and that's how it holds. So it's pretty self-explanatory. And this is a square, so it doesn't look like you can really put this on in the wrong orientation. So you just simply line this up. I, I usually would probably suggest to put one side in first, and then push this on 
and click it into place. I mean, it's not really a click because cardboard doesn't really click, but just push this into place. And there is a little bit of play with this cardboard, which I'm not a fan of. Doesn't seem like it seals all that well, but if we push this all the way up, it actually appears that the edges of the bag are supposed to catch into these tabs as well, and that's what holds it on securely. So it's a little funky, but we can see it is now on there all the way. And now we can put this back in, which again, it squints, it squints up the bag a little bit. This is actually marked as front. You can see right there, I immediately put it on incorrectly. So you put it where it's marked front and now it just sits on there again. There's no click. This entire mechanism just sits right on here and it doesn't even appear to be sealed very well at the back. So that just kind of sits on there and now this slides back in and you twist the lock and seal lever to the right kind of jiggle it as you do it and the whole thing locks into place it's a pretty bizarre way of oh i just realized the bumper is not on all the way and the bumper appears to be experiencing rubber reversion which is not pleasant so yeah that's very sticky which i'm not a fan of so i will need to do some work with that hepa filter is on the side it's the same basic style 7910 HEPA filter that you're used to with a lot of these Bissels, like the Bissell Cleanview Helix and the Cleanview 2. So that just goes right in there. Pretty self-explanatory. Looking at the bottom of this machine. Okay, so I expected this to have a blue brush roller, but it actually has a black one, despite the blue being kind of the theme of the rest of this machine. Now again, this bumper has completely fallen off and it's experiencing a massive amount of rubber reversion, which is not good. Um, I'm going to see if I can't replace this bumper, possibly. I really hope I can. I can't imagine I wouldn't be able to, because after all, this machine is identical to the Cleanview Helix, of which there is plenty, and there's unfortunately a good amount of gouges on the front of the unit as well, which is not great. Um, probably from the previous owner, maybe not Nathan, but the person who sold it to him. So I will have to fix this bumper. I might be able to stretch this, honestly, over this. Yeah, looks like I can. Yep, there we go. So that was all it needed. Just stretch that over. Now again, rubber reversion. This bumper is very sticky. Um, but, you know, not too big of a deal. Uh, to any time something like this sits in the box for a while, it's going to degrade a little bit. These machines obviously are not designed to sit in a box for over a decade. So, it's also worth noting this machine has a faux headlight. There's actually a spot for a headlight just on the CleanView Helix, but by the time this machine came out, they already removed the headlight from the CleanView Helix platform, so there's just a blank in here. It's just a black headlight cover. To my knowledge, there is no headlight socket in there that's wired, so I don't believe it'd be possible to simply replace this headlight cover and put a headlight in, but maybe that's something I'll investigate as time goes on. So that's pretty much that. This is the unboxing, assembly, and basic overview of the Bissell Velocity bagged. And real quick, we will end this video by showing you the actual model number information. So as we can see, this is a model 6221. And this one is from the 290th day of 2012. So it is a 12 amp unit. And this one is a Korean-made machine. So there is that. So that is pretty much it. This was my unboxing and overview of my NOS Bissell Velocity bagged upright vacuum. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. So... And I hope you enjoyed the constant interruptions by the lovely cat. Hi, Rika. Rika. Do you want to say goodbye to the YouTubes? Okay, I guess not. Alrighty. Well, anyways. This is Intellitech Studio signing out. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you want to see with the Velocity. Obviously, I will do a full review on this, as well as, you know, run the living room, that sort of thing, and do a full review and see if this was something that was worthy of being discontinued. This cat is currently sinking her claws into my leg, so I think we're going to go ahead and sign off. Anyways, this is Intellitech Studios signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.